At one point, Nelson Mandela banged Irish heads together and said famously, you don't make peace with your friends, you make peace with your enemies. Now, if it was as simple as just hearing that and acting on it, mm. that would be fine. But it isn't. That's the hardest thing ever to do. And that's uh, an experiential element. And that's a, a little message that we preach everywhere, mm. um, that you have to talk to the bad guys. Uh, that you have to include the people you don't like, the people who believe opposite to you, because that's the essence of the conflict. Well, if there's something not going to be done right now, what future is for this, these kids coming up? As the troubles go on, and as more people get shot and more people get killed by bombs, Despair creeps in. Well, people lost. can't forget the past. Yeah, because they've lost relations. Some people want, like they want vengeance. Some people. And working class people are going to turn around and say, once and for all, we have had enough. We're going to meet together, discuss together, to find a common denominator, and then we'll tell the elected representatives, this is what we want. If you move around internationally, you'll meet a lot of international NGOs who are in peace building. Almost none of them have that home base, that home laboratory, if you like, where they learnt their craft uh, from practice. And that's uh, a really unique thing at Glen Cree. It's experiential learning that we're promoting, not book learning or study learning. People like myself and former loyalist prisoners and former Republican prisoners, activists within the community who see that they're, they're there needs to be a better way forward here instead of marginalising the two communities trying to, trying to build bridges. And we have to accept that uh, both British and Irish identities are of equal validity. I was moved and humbled by the likes of Michael Patterson who spoke about, about what had happened to him and the way he says he, he either had to sink or swim and he decided to swim and, and fair play to him. He's, He's crossed a few. He's crossed a few oceans in my book. Like, there's a legacy of past violence there that's only beginning to become possible to address. And we've been at it for 30 years, so we know where we are and where we need to go with that. In a small community which has been very hurt on both sides for the last 35 years, uh, if you scratch the surface, that that hurt will will come to the surface very quickly. And that's why, obviously, um, organisations such as Glen Cree are vital in, in the help in that respect. I, I have met people uh, in Glen Cree, and I've seen people meeting uh, in Glen Cree that never would have the opportunity to meet I in that type of environment uh, any other way. And then when they meet up again, they know each other. I think if you know each other before a row begins, or in the middle of a row even, it's much easier to resolve it. And I think it's that coming together of people, giving an opportunity for people to actually come together, which is so essential. There's something about the place, and I don't know what it is. It's not something that's easy to speak about. You just can feel it. And in a way, you, can, you have to be there because it is... It touches another part of you, other than just the, the head. It touches somewhere inside. And, and that's the sort of part that needs to be moved uh, in us all uh, when, when it comes to uh, changing. So it's held a torch, if you like, for a, a long period of time, which has reminded, if you like, Southern society that this is not just an exclusively Northern issue. This dispute arose out of our own history, our own culture, and we've contributed to this mess. It's, in, it's at least in part our responsibility, not only to understand it, but to help in its resolution. And I think that's something that in Glen Cree we feel passionately about, is that the South, either by action or inaction, is absolutely as much a part of the problem 
And I think in that sense, we really, really, really have to be involved in the solution and participate fully and wholeheartedly. What there is, is a recognition that there is a peace dividend and that if we have peace and if we are working cross-border and have a single unit economically, that it will uh, enhance their own businesses. Since the, the late 90s, we've seen, obviously, business in the South booming in terms of the economy. We've seen confidence of people to come and invest in Ireland and then a large influx of, of foreign nationals to kind of support the growing economy. And that has, that has obviously benefited our business as, as part of the economy. And I think we, we would expect and we would, we would hope to see the same dividend being played out in the north of Ireland now that the, you know, the very visible signs of reconciliation between the two kind of extremes of, 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 the, of the political divide. And we think that's going to play a strong role in, in bringing out a similar dividend in the economy of Northern Ireland. So benefit, business do benefit from the peace dividend. Our peace building uh, experience has, has created a toolbox now which can be deployed sensitively and appropriately depending on who, the, if you like, the, the client uh, may be. There is no doubt that the Irish peace process has been perceived as being a huge success internationally. It isn't that we can export what we did here, lock, stock and barrel, and say we have the answer, because we don't. Uh, they have the answer, but we may be able to help with process. Uh, Glen Cree has been used over the years uh, in order to be a sort of a, a facilitator for people, not just from Ireland to come together, but from abroad. Uh, we've a classic example of the Middle East situation where Glen Cree has been very important in that respect as well. Uh, so f from that point of view, it's a very good organisation which we have a lot of time for. There, there is an answer, there are many answers, and uh, I think places like Glen Cree can provide the space and place to work that out in a way. It's, it's been a, and it should continue to be, you know, quite a, a significant player in the force for societal change on the island, I think, for the, for, for the foreseeable future. To be honest, we're really only at the start of this. This is going to take at least a generation because while we at a political level can, you know, bring forward the Good Friday Agreement and the St Andrews Agreement, what's really needed is, is proper reconciliation amongst the people. I think we, we acknowledge our 30 years of experience, our 30 years of making it up as we went along, and accept that that has now developed into a certain professionalism where we know our business and we do it well and we do it efficiently. More of a science and less of an art. Um, so we have to be a little more um, assertive uh, of our professionalism and our huge capacity and our decades of experience and put that to work in a new context and in a future context.